stories are unanswered questions. My name is Osa Demebi, and every week I will tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, this week's story is by Nsisong Akban, and it's titled Under the Moonlit Sky. It was just like any other night, and as usual, I enjoyed playing in the backyard. Day or night, the bushes there never really scared me, unlike my sister Ima. Mama had often scolded me for my fearlessness, but I was quite stubborn. The sound of crickets soothed me. I created an imaginary world with them as friends, and me and them would have frequent conversations. It was a place where I could play undisturbed for Mama, especially when I had finished all my chores and homework. Ima, my younger sister, would always keep Mama occupied with her continuous requests for bedtime stories. She would keep chanting every night until Mama complied. It was the only Bibio she knew how to speak perfectly. I would often tease her about it and we would both laugh. Her favorite spot was lying next to Mama on the mat in the front yard, gazing up at the moonlit sky. Ima loved listening to stories, and her infectious giggles and bright smile could be heard from afar. She would often bombard Mama with questions, as if trying to alter a part of the story she did not understand or didn't care for. I like to believe Mama enjoyed it too, as she always patiently answered all of Ima's inquiries. Once, when Mama was sick and was advised not to talk too much, Ima cried all through the night because there was no one to tell her stories. I hate that telling stories. I thought they were boring. Papa wouldn't indulge her either. He sternly warned her not to disturb him about stories. Though Papa appeared strict, he cared about us. Ever since the accident last year which cost him his job at the nearby town's palm oil factory, he had changed. He preferred being alone most of the time, taking long walks outside the compound, lost in his thoughts. The accident seemed to have burdened him with something I could not comprehend, and it had made him withdrawn and somber. His job was not the only thing he lost. He'd also lost his sense of humor. Since Papa changed, Mama had managed to not only hold on to her excellent sense of humor, but to take up more responsibilities. She had become better at everything she did, including filling in the gaps left by Papa's absence. Ima and I would often overhear Mama and Papa arguing. Mama would tell Papa he was being too hard on us, but he would dismiss her, claiming he didn't want to waste his time on us because someday Ima would come and take us away. I could never fully grasp the meaning behind Papa's cryptic remarks. I was ten at the time. Ima was five. One fateful night, while engrossed in a game with my imaginary friends in the backyard, I suddenly heard Mama's piercing scream. Akemi! Fair! Something grave was happening. Why else would Mama use that special dialect name and the ensuing command? She usually reserved that name for serious conversations about Papa's behavior and their constant arguments. Or when she was imparting life lessons. Always reminding me that one day, I would need to grow up and take care of myself and my baby sister. The sound of her voice sent chills down my spine. It was unlike any of the previous times she'd used the name. It was filled with fear and a desperate cry for help. Yet, she told me to run. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what was happening. I could hear Ima's muffled screams and the voices of two men. Who were these men? What did they want? Where was Papa? And why hadn't he returned to protect us? 
Questions flooded my mind as I ventured out of the bushes, heading for the house to save my family from the strange voices. I picked up a log I saw lying at the foot of one of the trees. It was heavier than I expected, but I was determined and clasped my small hands around the log. I hauled it along, uncertain how I was going to use it as a weapon as I made my way to the side of the house where I had last seen Mama and Ima lying down. Suddenly, Mama's voice cried out again, weaker this time. Ahemi! Mbok! Fehe! Her words shattered my small heart into pieces. It was as if she was begging me to listen because she knew I wouldn't. Why would she ask me to run? My hands were tired and my palms sweaty. The wood slipped from my grasp, narrowly missing my leg. I heard one man say to the other, Ipa! Kake seme yenesine kufuado! I did not fully understand what was said, but I staggered backward, trembling and scared, tears streaming down my face. I was unsure of what to do. Should I really run as Mama had pleaded? Where would I run to? Away from home? From Mama? From Ima? Ima? I could no longer hear Ima's voice. Was she all right? What about Papa? If I ran, would Mama come looking for me? Confused and afraid, I dropped to my knees, sobbing. More than ever, all I wanted was my Mama. I yearned for her comforting presence, her warm embrace. I heard one of the men's voices draw close, and Mama's last plea rang in my ears. I scrambled to my feet and took off running into the bushes. It was thicker than I remembered as thick as the dark cloud of uncertainty descending over my life. I swatted plants and docked branches as I ran, tears blurring my vision. My heart was racing and my feet was working hard to keep up. Mama's last plea propelled me on. I knew I was running for my life. But from what? And where was I running to? Should I have listened to Mama and fled? That was the last time I saw Mama, Ima, or even Papa. To this day, unanswered questions plague my thoughts. Nsisong is a talented storyteller who resides in Lagos. She is known for her captivating storytelling style and relatable characters, which draw readers into her world. You can read more of her work on Medium at naquan002 and connect with her on Instagram at official underscore nsisong and on LinkedIn at nsisongaquan. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send an email to info at osadumebi.com or send me a message at Osadmebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.